the AI, based on all the information and the prompt engineering, is going to write better than you. Look, I wrote this book called Prepared, except this took me two years. It really took me uh, 43 years because it took a lifetime of experiences to put it into words. Chat GPT-4 could have wrote this book in about 30 seconds. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Prep Life. Big shout out to my patrons who make this show possible. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. If you're interested, patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover, and you guys can subscribe to get access to the uncensored version of Prep Life called Prep Life Underground. Hey, so let's kick off the news. There's a lot of things going on, but first, I want to talk about Tucker Carlson. Now, everybody knows by this time, uh, I even did a show on it, that Tucker Carlson was fired. No one really knows, it's specu speculative at best, no one really knows why he was fired. Now, some news reports came out today that it was a racy text. In fact, it, it was potentially racist. A lot of the texts that are coming out, including the videos that are being released because they're being leaked, are not controversial. In fact, they make me like Tucker more because most of them are him talking about how bad the production is, how bad the website is, how he won't tolerate that or he won't say that. Even in the Dominion investigation, he was like one of the only people who didn't have one of the people that were in controversy on his show because he didn't know if the person coming on his show was the right thing to do because he didn't have any facts to back it. So I also like how Fox News fires him, their ratings tank, and now all of a sudden leaked video clips, text messages, audio recordings are suddenly making their way into mainstream media that happen to be on the other side of the spectrum. I mean, CNN is reporting on these things. Now, why would that benefit Fox News? Well, one, it won't, but maybe they think it would because they want to look good in firing Tucker because it was justified. But everything that's being presented right now, including text threads, communication, even first-person sources are saying it was a vendetta. Like the owner didn't like him because something tied up with his wife and he decided to get rid of him. They needed to push him out. Well, how is that working out for you, Fox News? They did the same thing to Megyn Kelly. There was a controversy over uh, Bill O'Reilly. They've all sought different platforms in media, including independent media. I mean, there was a group uh, yesterday that came out and offered Tucker Carlson a $100 million five-year deal, including like a VP position, equity in the company, all these different things. Independent media, including shows like mine, are the future. Well, I wouldn't even say it's the future. It's here and now, right? I, I don't get paid for this show. I, I do this show because I like you guys. I mentioned Patreon because I hope some of you guys will want to support us and go to the pay, go to the underground version of what I do, which is just the uncensored version, talking about some of the nuances of the highlights that I talk about. Um, maybe you'll support my app, my company, buy a hat, buy a t-shirt. But we certainly don't get paid at Prep Life, and most of these shows are just working off a of sponsorship. It reminds me when I started doing podcasts, and I started doing advertisements in my podcast. And people were like, oh, now it's just a sales show. And I thought to myself, damn, like I invest a lot of my time doing media, YouTube, uh, Patreon, um, this show, podcast for free to provide value to you. And that's the conundrum here. So you have this conundrum, which is if you're a member of a large corporation, then you're just a talking head likely. And, and perceived by people as being like, you're just owned by, a, you're a corporate shill and owned by the corporation. You're just talking about narratives. The difference for Tucker Carlson was he didn't follow the script. He was way off script, way off narrative. In fact, there is some speculation that he was fired because he said something at a speech unrelated to his um, uh, Fox News show about praying 10 minutes a day. Yeah, we should do that. It, like, like all the things that are going on in the world, like you should probably pray 10 minutes a day. What's wrong with that? It's his First Amendment right, and he's not cramming it down your throat. He's saying a statement during a speech, and the people at Fox News had a problem with that. 
I have a problem with Fox News having a problem because I don't want to divert and out like your attention is an asset now. You, you must realize that where you partition your attention is very important because you're a sole proprietor of your success via the attention and where you allocate it. So uh, I always uh, talk about this in mindset and resilience and some of the experiences that we train. But I say, if you want to become better, become better at allocating your attention and your time into things that are going to give you a return on your investment, which is why I hope you watch this show, why I hope you listen to podcasts, why I hope you w watch and, and do books, why you train with Philcraft Survival. Those are very important. So the fact that he went against the narrative and Fox News pushed him out is a great indication of how this conundrum works. The problem in this is eventually he'll become a corporate shill because he'll have to get paid. Like, how can you be organic and real and trustworthy and not get paid? Like, everybody wants something for free, but that's not how it works. Like, these people have to earn their living. I, I, I d digested this and, and invested it in my life so much that I'm in a studio in my basement because I wanted to be able to come down from my family that's like 10 feet above me and give you my best but not compromise the time with my family. I'm striking the balance. So what you're going to see is Tucker Carlson go out into a, a potential independent news source, Newsmax, Rumble, whatever it is, and crush it. And then people eventually will say, well, he's owned by Rumble. He's a corporate shield. And, and we run into this issue roundabout again and again and again. And here's what I tell you. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can have both, guys. Like, certainly I am not a, a, a Tucker Carlson. I am influencing a very small segment of the overall population in my best way around this idea of being prepared via my experiences, via subject matter experts, and via me distilling the news for you. So you can have that without being overtaxed and inundated with a whole bunch of salesy stuff. I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but like, I want to support companies. Like, this is weird how just these guys at organic, I can't even pronounce it. Organifi. It's organ I F I called mind pump or in partnership with mind pump media called peak power. It's like brain food. These guys sent this to me. I don't work for them. They don't pay me. I mean, maybe people will pay me one day, but I, certainly I'm using this product because I believe in it. And I don't ask for this stuff. People send it to me. Just like any small company is free to send me stuff at any time because I want to support small business. We don't have to compromise our virtues and our ethics by doing that. We live in a capitalistic society where that's how we move the needle. There's nothing wrong with that, guys. Like, don't be afraid of that. Like, get out there, live your best life. Don't compromise your values for the corporations, for power, for money. But you could still have a balance of both. And I think Tucker Carlson is a perfect example of that. I digress. You guys can check them out. It's uh, Peak Power, Organifi. Um, and they gave me a coupon code for you guys to save 20%. No affiliation. I like it because it tastes good. And it's brain food. It's all, it also has lion mane's, uh, lion mane mushroom and coffee berry, which I'm trying to do healthier stuff. If you haven't realized, ugh, I'm just getting a little stronger. Uh, I've, I've dropped about seven pounds. Um, trying to restore a lot of the fat that I held on to during the wintertime in hibernation because um, we're coming out of the hibernation and I'm trying to get a little bit more fit for this summer because I need to get a little bit more fit. I need to lose some weight. My goal is 225. I'm at like 233 or something like that. One day at a time. Or should I say one calorie at a time. Um, let's talk about this writer strike. If you didn't know, 11,000 writers in Hollywood went on strike uh, it's a union. They go on strike and they try to negotiate with these big companies. And when they did that, they one of the stipulations they asked for in this was they didn't want chat GPT listed in the negotiations to take over their jobs. Here's the kicker. You're striking your job, which means nobody's working. So what are the producers and the smart people at some of the, in some of these industries going to do? They potentially are going to look to chat GPT for 
we're at four now, the the fourth uh, iteration of this, to potentially write for them. The thousands of WGA scribes who went on strike this week are concerned in part with the rise of AI and how the major studios might tap the technology going forward. You think? Well, if they're going to tap it now, uh, out of any time, it's the best time because you're not working. Uh, by the way, this covers down on everything that you likely tune into. Hollywood screenwriters have long imagined dystopias where machines ruled over humans over the future. They're now starting to worry the machines are coming much sooner. Thousands of unionized scribes, that's what they call them, <laughs> scribes, who went on strike this week are demanding better pay and taking aim at another issue, including the rise of generative artificial intelligence like ChatGPT. The AI-powered chatbot that has been captivated and alarmed people creating professions in recent months. The Writers Guild of America says it wants Hollywood's top studios and networks to regulate the use of AI on creative projects. The union's specific demand, according to a document released Monday, st states, and I quote, AI can't write or rewrite literary material, can't be used as source material, and MBA cover material can't be used to train AI. Dude, what fantasy world are you living in? Guys, this is the start point to the collapse of what AI is doing to Americans, to the world, to human beings. This is phase one. It starts right here, right now. This is the first profound example of AI outsourcing human beings in real time, and you're watching it. In a response that left many professional writers dispirited, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, the trade association that represent, represents most of the industry's big entertainment, we're talking everybody, rejected that proposal, which, dude, it makes sense to me. Like, have an understanding of, well, really, understand your operational environment. My team used to always say, understand your operational environment. Like, if you're going into a, 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 a diplomat's office, make sure you understand that operational environment because it's not like sitting down drinking chai with the Taliban. You have to understand your operational environment. These writers don't understand that. What they should be demanding is the integration and a plan moving forward on how we integrate. You are not going to tell a company to suppress uh, chat GPT or AI, generative machine learning AI. And if you do, you will be behind and everybody else in this race will win and you will lose. You know why? Because likely, especially against certain television shows, the AI, based on all the information and the prompt engineering, is going to write better than you. I hate to say that. I hate to say that. Look, I wrote this book called Prepared. And I love this book. It's like, I'm very proud of this because I did this alone. I had a writer who basically transcribed. He edited. He helped me get through it. But this is my ideas. This is all me. Except this took me two years. It really took me uh, 43 years because it took a lifetime of experiences to put it into words. Chat GPT-4 could have wrote this book in about 30 seconds. Now, it would have took a lot of prompt engineering, a lot of investment and understanding and bringing information together, but the actual writing of the material, that's what it's good at. So if you're a writer and you understand how to prompt engineer, which is really the occupation of the future, the profession of our future, then you understand how to take information, collect it, disseminate certain prompts of communication to the AI to allow it to navigate this understanding so you could spit out the product and it be squared away. We're talking about writing for TV shows. Oh, but my, what about the what about the laughs? What about the comic? It could do that too and likely do it better than human beings. You know why? Because it's using all the information that exists from human beings. So it's going to be more creative in generating that through machine learning. Oh, and by the way, it does it in like 10 seconds, maybe five seconds, depending on the what it's asking. So I, it, this is unbelievable, but this is our first example of it. And the technology is moving so fast and will move even faster than we can anticipate. And that is why we have got to deal with this in this negotiation, except saying we are going to strike. We are not going to do this job anymore, affecting late night TV shows, 
sitcom TV shows and even movies, you're basically leaving the companies that said, hey, we're not doing that. You're leaving them with no option. Where do you think they're going to default to? Like right now, they're going to default to ChatGPT. And guess what? Here's the problem. Every single prompt that they make and as it fine tunes itself will only get better with time. The more they prompt it, the more it will improve, and the more your job will be irrelevant. That's like doomsday stuff. Because if you're not smart as a human being right now to look inside your own business, Philcraft Survival, my company, is already looking how to take advantage of this technology to improve people's lives. We have an article that we need to jam together. We need help editing that article. We need to understand how marketing rates via all the complexities of uh, multifacets marketing work, taxes, all of that stuff, optimization, it does that for you. Why would you not leverage the technology? Oh, Lord. Um, here it goes. And it says, right now, Justine Bateman, this is uh, off his Twitter, uh, Twitter account says, watch this WGA strike carefully. Understand that our fight is the same fight that is com coming to your next professional sector next. It's the devaluing of human effort, skill, and talent in favor of automation and profits. I mean, we could we can go down that road. We could we could say that. Like we could we could say that. And you could be the guy who's like outraged, literally using a piece of technology that likely uses automation. You're you're tweeting this you twat on your Twitter. And when you do that, you're saying like, oh, this is devaluing human beings. Or you could figure out a way to value human beings by looking at the entirety of the situation and finding your niche in it. Because certainly Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google, the list goes on is the start point. And you're literally virtue signaling that. Oh my God. I don't. I, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, moving on. So the active shooter in Serbia. Here's what I'll tell you. I, I, I spend a lot of time. I, I spend less time on Instagram than I ever have in my entire life. And it's greatly increased my cognitive capability, my attention span, my emotional stability, my mental health in profound ways. I go in, I do the thing, and I'm out. You know where I focus most of my attention? On human beings in my life. How about we should take that lead? Um... Let me skim over the Serbia active shooting because I want to tell you that this does tie into the U.S. Surgeon General just releasing a report that lists loneliness as one of the mental health crises of our day. Crises of our day. Half of adults are suffering from loneliness, which include the risk of depression, anxiety, and suicide. It is our mental health dilemma. Why? Because you're finding solitude, social connection through a cell phone. Through a cell phone, not through actually getting together with human beings and like shaking hands and talking about stuff. Phil Craft Survival in Provo, for example, where we will be launching, relaunching the tribe. It's the first time that I've actually gone, oh man, like this tribe thing can exist here. You know, the idea is I want a Phil Craft Survival in every major area of the country. I want one in Phoenix. We're, we're working on that right now. I want Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. We already have a hybrid version at Gritter Sports. I want one in Tennessee. I want one in Colorado. I want one in Kalispell, Montana, so on and so forth. Hopefully talking to investors and talking to partners and talking to good human beings who want the same thing, we can get that done. But we will have Fieldcraft HQ in Provo, 20,000 square foot, jujitsu, the gym, health and wellness, like the sauna, the uh, cold plunge, all the training on the back end. We're launching our first close quarters defense, home defense level three class, which is defensive pistol level three, which is taking all the fundamentals we learn in gunfighting and applying it to home defense, which is a very different consideration than doing raids in the army, guys. It's very different. It's not running and gunning. It's surreptitious movement when appropriate. It's clearing corners, clearing spaces, and we have a shoot house in our new location with retail and all the things. Why is that important? What does that have to do with uh, what I'm talking about? Because we're building a community based out of that firebase. That firebase with all of its members is building, building the most uh, strongest and resilient members of our community because they're trained in all the things. They have a foundation of jujitsu with uh, Greg Lappin. 
and Greg Anderson coming in for the workshops. They have a base in understanding and fitness with Devin from Tactical Cowboy and his wife, who's the physical therapist, learning about nutrition, learning about how to take care of themselves. Brian Peters, the professional NFL player that we bring in for cold and hot therapy, doing workshops, the base. Then all the technical skill sets of stop the bleed, canning and jarring, all that. You think those people are going to be resilient? Yeah. And the, the protocol in business is we provide value, but it's a reciprocal relationship. The most important element of all of that is what it builds in person in real time. Community, networks, and mental health improvement. Leading into Ser uh, Serbia, one of the biggest, oh, by the way, Surgeon General says that the loneliest epidemic, which is, I would never imagine they would bring something up like this because usually they just tell lies. The loneliness epidemic is on par with the smoking epidemic and all the health issues it causes. Higher rates of cardiovascular um, disease and dying from all of these things related to depression and anxiety because of it. So who's in your network? Who's in your tribe? This Serbia thing has me mind blown right now. There's an active shooting in Serbia, and I saw this originally released on a news uh, channel um, that I won't mention, and it says that right now, let me get it because these guys crank out a whole bunch of news. So it says uh, a Serbia active shooter uh, went into a school and killed eight, killed eight. And on the comments, which is the most disturbing component of this, all of the comments, every single comment that I read literally stated that we are bringing America's problems to the world when it comes to active shooting. What do you think the gun control laws are in a European nation of Serbia? What do you think those are? Um, and when we look at gun laws, when it's appropriate, left-wing media will use it as a strategy to deploy to create this narrative shaping around guns. When it's not convenient, we won't talk about it. Like this guy who was the neighbor of um, five people who told them to stop shooting his gun in his yard, and then he went over with his AR-15 that was illegally purchased when he wasn't even um, legally supposed to be there, he kills all of them, including an 8-year-old boy. But wait a minute. Like, he didn't buy this gun legally? Um, he wasn't even supposed to be in this country? And then he gets the gun and commits an act of violence? Well, we can't blame it on the gun because that's just like the person being crazy. How about every single person who commits an act of violence is the problem? Not the tool. I, I don't know. I, dude, I, maybe you guys can help me in the comments down below. I don't understand how a reasonable and logical human being, I guess that's my answer, right? Nobody's reasonable and nobody's logical anymore. How nobody could say, oh yeah, like we're in a mental health crisis. Most of these comments from this media um, post had to do with, oh, America's doing it again. How, how dare we allow our, our issues come out and, and, and destroy other countries? What the hell are you talking about? Have you been to the Middle East? Like, you want to talk about gun control? Let's talk about people being buried up to their neck uh, like women and stoned to death because of adultery. Or let's talk about public hangings in Iran. Let's talk about ISIS and terrorism and all the things that are going on in the world and America's the big bad wolf put it pushing all of its issues everywhere else in the world. One of these posts, I rarely comment, but one of these posts was talking about... Um, the amount of gun deaths, and I think I said this before, I'll, I'll repeat it for those that haven't heard me. One of the issues had to do with um, somebody comparing uh, vehicle accidents versus guns. And they said, well, uh, vehicle accidents are just as bad and say, well, that's not even true because active shootings and gun violence is way above vehicle accidents. That's actually not true. The numbers are roughly 60 to 70,000 people die from guns. 40,000 people die from vehicle accidents. Millions, actually millions of people die from in, or are injured in vehicle accidents. Not die, but are injured in vehicle accidents. 
Why is that important? Well, it's 40,000 versus 60 to 70,000. Obviously, guns are the issue. 60% of those gun deaths annotated are suicide. It's like 20-something thousand people die from guns. Now, that's not a number to brag about. But have we looked at the numbers of overdose from fentanyl? Oh, yeah. On the edge of becoming the leading cause of death for, for young men. 18 to like 34. Fentanyl overdoses. 100,000 Americans died from that. But we're focused on the tool from violent people doing violent things. This happened in Oklahoma recently. This guy goes in. This is a very hard case to, to digest. But this guy goes in, and he's the husband of this lady who has three kids, and they have two additional kids come over to sleep over. Five kids total, one adult. And then this guy, the guy, I won't even mention his name, um, is a, a pedophile. He's about to go on trial for another charge and nobody knows about it. The father-in-law figures out this through a work search and confronts his daughter. His daughter doesn't want to hear it. Well, they go over for a sleepover and they all die. He kills them all. This hasn't been reported yet because they're waiting for the identification of all the kids because there was five children involved, but it looks like he killed them all with a pistol and then killed himself. That's what it looks like. Now, is that a pistol issue? Well, if you're a gun advocate, then you would say absolutely not. If you're a gun control advocate, you would say it's all the gun. If he didn't have the gun, he wouldn't have killed the kids. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? Are, are, are Americans that dumb where they would point the finger at the tool? It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't the person. It was the drug. The drug is the issue. In fact, that's, that's the case. We're actually, the, the drug is the issue. How about it's a people issue and we're living in a systemic, viral, the only thing systemic about and viral about what's going on with human beings is mental health. It's a crisis. All bad stats up, all good stats down. You take that and the combination of the worst policy decision-making in human history, and you are where you are. The rate of the uh, feds was just risen. I guess that's a poor way of saying that. Just rose again. And right now, we're looking at F Fed raises from the Associated Press. Fed raises key rate, but hence, it may pause amid bank turmoil. This is posted 11 minutes ago. The Federal Reserve reinforced its fight against high inflation Wednesday by raising its key interest rate by a quarter point to the highest level in 16 years. But the Fed also signaled that it may now pause its streak of 10 rate hikes, which have been made borrowing for consumers and businesses steadily more expensive. Yeah, you think? The most expensive it's been in 16 years. You think? So where does this lead us? Well, everything that I see with Biden running in campaign again we're in a world of hurt. We have nearly two more years to deal with this. Are we going to make it? Dude, it is not looking good. For the first time in my life, like I don't, I have never liked to, to be the guy who criticized the government. I worked for the government. I know what incompetence is. I saw a lot of incompetence, but I also saw a lot of good human beings doing the good work that's necessary. The first time in my life, I've looked at everything in its totality and realized we're screwed. We are screwed. More about that in the Prep Life Underground. I, I just get, there's not enough time in the day to talk about that. Uh, covered everything that I need to cover. Want to tell you that the CQD course will be posted soon. Provo is going to be up this summer. We're looking at Phoenix being up. We got some meetings um, for Colorado. Guys, I hope uh, I'm, I'm, I'm headhunting an investor right now. Um, and and we're, we're not a small company. I mean, we're a small company, we're a small business, but I'm, I'm headhunting equity for a large investment because I want to get this done the right way. I want to be a fire base in every major uh, city near in every state for the future. That's my goal because I want people to lean on a community that's going to train them, take care of them and build the resilience back in this country that we've lost. I want Miss Amber to go to every single fire base and teach homesteading, homeschooling, 
I want Casey and the guys to run over and visit every fire base and cross-pollinate their tactical and technical capabilities. I want to go and get everybody pumped up about it and teach them why preparedness is important. I want Doc Jones to go in and teach about tourniquet application and stop the bleed. Mike Hernandez to do mobility. The list goes on. We need to get back to basics. And I'm afraid with everything going on, we either do this deliberately as a plan to get ahead by going back to basics or we're 10 steps behind everything else going in the world, including AI, and we're forced to. We need to figure this out on our own. Uh, I hope you'll join me on that journey. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Until next time, peace out.